Do you have any success stories that you could share with us, uh, either in your own experience or someone that you know or work with that was able to thread that needle, that was able to create some really great ed tech innovations because they did the work of interacting with the stakeholder communities in education? Yeah. I mean, I think, again, like change is totally incremental. So I don't think I can be like, oh, here's a silver bullet. That's like a success story. But um, one thing that uh, my team and I worked on a few years ago was that the Gates Foundation uh, sort of put out this grand challenge, which is sort of a challenge for the field to come up with solutions for a certain space. And it was oriented around the idea of Algebra One and how there is sort of disparities between um, students within different demographics in terms of like how successful they are in taking Algebra One and that setting them up for, you know, their educational career in the future. Because Algebra One is a basically it's kind of a gateway course um, for students and it can either set you up to be like prepared for college or if you are kind of routed in a way that um, prevents you essentially from taking it in middle school, the, that can really disrupt your ability to, to uh, be able to apply to college, to be able to study STEM in college, et cetera. And so the Gay Nation was really like looking at this as a problem space where maybe some of this incremental change could happen. Um, and one of the things that we found as we were kind of working on this project and we were talking with teachers and students is that there isn't like one thing that you could fund in this space that would get you there. So like, it wasn't just like a grand challenge around okay, let's, let's say virtual tutoring is like what we'll, we're going to focus on and we want technology platforms to do that. What we found is like that maybe is one kind of solution, but there's also the idea of um, students need better support systems. There's the um, issue of, you know, kind of like where pedagogy can be strengthened and what that means for teacher practice, like teacher professional development is a piece that could be funded better. Um, feedback mechanisms, like uh, the way assessments work could be funded better. And what ended up happening is they, instead of like funding in like one direct um, category, they funded different sort of ideas that were oriented around these kind of like different potential points of intervention, which is kind of a systems thinking thing is like, there are different points of intervention that can lead to better outcomes. And so they funded kind of different um, organizations that were focused on, you know, for example, teacher professional development, whereas other organizations were focused on things like virtual tutoring. And taking that sort of different points of intervention approach just helps create more of like a holistic view of like, how do you get to better outcomes? And so I know it's, it sounds kind of like a, a boring story compared to like a TED talk that is like, there's this one, yeah. <laughs> there's this one idea that was super successful, but the fact that they can spread their funding around in that way, I think kind of just chips away at the problem in a way that acknowledges that there are systemic barriers that you need to kind of overcome in order to make a difference.